so now you are starting with uh, the first module of your uh, spring framework okay the first module of the spring framework and uh, that one is your spring ioc container module or sometimes called as spring core container module i repeat again if you remember yesterday we listed out uh, those modules right? like uh, ioc module aop module webmbc module like spring orm module right? jdbc do module so those are certain module we mentioned now the ioc module whatever we are discussing meaning whatever we mentioned that one we are just starting with now that ioc module sometimes also referred as spring core container module also okay na actually ioc stands for your inversion of control okay na try to understand this is where first time people coming into spring framework started getting confused so ioc basically stands for your inversion of control so that module you are talking about that's the inversion of control module and uh, that one you know like many time also people refer that one as a spring core container module also okay you can say either ioc module or spring core container module any one would be fine is it clear or not yes clear now what is this uh, <coughs> spring core container module is all about that this module of the spring framework is an implementation of ioc pattern i repeat again uh, you can understand from that term spring core container you can understand uh, it is it is just giving you okay it is just giving you the idea of uh, some some term like a container you might have uh, you might have heard about like uh, a uh, servlet container ejb container you know like container is nothing a new term now you you can think on that way okay so the spring core container you can consider on that way like uh, it's a, it's a kind of your servlet container or on that on that notion or on that way you can compare the thing okay now this is spring core container whatever you are talking about the spring core container is an implementation okay the spring core container inside your spring framework is an implementation of the ioc design pattern now from here you can understand ioc is different spring core container is different okay na try to understand here ioc here it is mentioned as a pattern and i don't need to tell you what is a design pattern you getting or not you might be coming across with varieties of design pattern okay and ioc is one such design pattern now for that design pattern the implementation is meaning for the ioc design pattern the implementation from spring framework is not other than your spring core container i repeat again try to understand what i'm saying is the spring core container whatever you are saying it is it is the same notion of a container but whenever i'm saying container don't think like uh, uh, the server kind of thing container you just understand as a container wise okay so don't get confused about the server it's not a server okay but it it give you that uh, uh, that realization of like a servlet container or a, a ejb container but here there is no server exist okay but it give you that realization the functionality of a kind of container okay so in spring environment we have something called as a spring core container which is one of the very fundamental element of your spring frame now this spring core container is an implementation of ioc design pattern now what is the relation if you observe okay what we are trying to say here is we are saying ioc is one design pattern ioc is one design pattern 
for that ioc design pattern for that ioc design pattern spring core container from spring framework is an implementation is it clear yes both of you linga did you understand yeah yeah yes see try to understand design pattern and its implementation are two different thing design pattern are some kind of best uh, you know like solution right best uh, solution for certain problem meaning the design pattern explain the best solution for certain problem in a certain context it explain that uh, it just explain that try to understand you, you look into singleton design pattern right so it says like okay so you can think of having a single object in a particular context you can you can identify your context and within that context if you are able to you know like make sure there is only one object getting created for your class then you can consider that as a singleton that is what uh, the singleton pattern says right singleton pattern only says that this is certain thing this is called as your I mean, this is what the notion of singleton meaning it's, it's just a, it's just a kind of statement okay it just say that but you know like implementing that a singleton pattern is different are you getting or not meaning singleton pattern just as a statement okay and uh, implementing singleton singleton pattern are two different thing okay so design patterns are just uh, you know like uh, the best solution what they explained okay now what they explained as the best solution we have to implement it you, you take anything you take your factory pattern you take your abstract factory pattern you take your breeze pattern you take your decorator pattern you can take any other pattern exist okay now all these patterns are what they are just kind of documented statement right so it just says if you are in a certain problem possibly this pattern could be helpful for you okay but they don't give you the solution that means they don't give you the implementation they don't implement for you they said if you are in a certain problem possibly this pattern could be useful for you so you have to implement that pattern right or not yes it's yes. right now the same thing here we are referring ioc is also one of the design pattern like uh, many other design pattern there is one design pattern available called as what ioc now that ioc design pattern talks about certain thing okay na talks about the best solution for certain problem in certain context right but uh, what it is talking about and all these things we will be discussing but keep in mind like ioc is just a design pattern you know like in a in a conceptual manner okay like how any other design pattern explain you the best solution for a given problem in a given context okay similarly ioc also explain you some best solution for certain problem in certain context it just explain but whatever the ioc explain spring framework implemented that and the implementation from spring framework for this particular try to understand the implementation for this particular uh, you know like a pattern which pattern the ioc pattern from spring framework is known as a spring core container hello yes i'm yeah, from yeah can you explain me yeah it is uh, uh, spring core container module is uh, implementation of ioc design pattern from mm -hmm. spring frame works is called a spring core container module because ioc is a design pattern mm -hmm. it provide some solution for certain problems mm -hmm. but we need to implement it so that mm -hmm. the implementation is done by spring mm -hmm. frame works mm -hmm. and that implementation is called spring, spring container. core container module not module the spring okay. core container. container okay yes sir the spring while you are working with spring 
we will be having that uh, a spring core container as a very fundamental element and uh, that spring container or spring core container you know like is an implementation of the ioc part both of you are clear yeah brother okay now now the question is okay we understood spring core container is the implementation of the ioc pattern now the question is what is that ioc is all about because uh, we said ioc is a design pattern now it is necessary for us to understand what ioc as a design pattern explain are you understanding or not yes. i repeat it what ioc as a pattern explaining what uh, ioc as a design pattern what solution it is addressing which meaning which problem it is addressing for which problem it is providing best solution you getting or not because most of the time the design patterns provide what the best solution for a given problem in a given context we said right now what was that problem okay and uh, in which context uh, you know like uh, ioc provide the best solution meaning according to ioc pattern okay what is the what is that best solution in which problem and in which context right so that we need to understand so ioc is one of the architectural design pattern i don't want to get into a kind of much more of the design pattern because it's not a design pattern session but you might be having little bit idea like in your design pattern we have varieties of uh, categories we have uh, types of design pattern we have structural design pattern behavioral design pattern architectural design pattern creational design pattern like which varieties of categories available and meaning these are not the name of the design pattern these are the categorization of the design pattern okay if you look into your gang of four design pattern book or if you look into a pattern oriented software architecture design pattern book okay you will be finding they explain varieties of uh, you know like categorization of this design pattern okay now among them one of the design one of the categories architectural design pattern meaning architectural design pattern category now your ioc falls under the architectural design a pattern category okay now what this ioc basically describe it describes to have an external entity okay according to the ioc i repeat again the pattern only explain the thing right or not now what this uh, ioc pattern explain is it says you need to have an external entity in your system okay I meaning you need to have one external entity to create and where okay to create and where objects of your system are you getting it now i repeat again what it says is ioc being a design pattern comes under your architectural design pattern category that's fine but now you are interested to know okay what it is really explaining what problem it is address right now that problem you should realize okay but that realizes and i will bring it up but you just understand what it says really it says you need to have an external entity in your system okay an external entity in your system in order to create and aware objects is it clear or not yes or no yes yes now you may say like okay so what what this particular one is uh, all about like uh, what is exactly the meaning of having one external entity for creating and wearing object right where exactly the problem try to understand if you look into your uh, you know like um, application development let me just put a question for a moment like uh, so like some and then you need to respond like uh, what is the percentage of code you will be considering okay na so so like uh, uh, in your application whenever you writing the code what is the percentage of code you will be considering involve only for creating and wearing object wearing in the sense making one object available with other or something like that chaining one object with other something like that okay now what is the percentage of code you write on your application just for creating object how much percentage will be given 
percentage um, set it maybe um, ha huh, any object o only object creation you think of it will be um 30 to 40% no 30 to 40% you are saying so like in 100 line code you are saying 30 line code possibly you are writing creating objects right or not um i mean yeah uh, maybe a little more but I, if you, if you can just come down maybe at least 10 15 10 15 line if it is yeah. uh, yes or no you can yeah. consider that one as a better percentage okay yeah. they like 10 percentage okay you cannot you cannot deny that 10 percent is 100 percent you are doing am i right or yeah. not yes yeah yeah that means in 100 line of code in every 100 line code you are writing 10 line of code which is involved with creating object now just creating one object might be forcing you to create another object also so like there is one class a available but that class a is designed in such a way that it need b class object as a input through its constructor that means uh, while creating a class object you have to create b class object or not yeah yes sir if the b class object is uh, having a dependency meaning you know like uh, input called as a c class object then what will be doing first we'll be creating a c class object or not yes or no yes yes yes, yes. then we'll be creating a c class object supplying that one as a parameter for your constructor of b class object that b class object will be supplying as a parameter for this is what we are calling as wearing what are you doing we're wearing one object with other understood or not yes yeah. now the ioc says that why creating these object okay why creating these object as part of your application code okay now you know like ioc don't say that don't create the object meaning it don't says like the object should not be created on your application it says why you are taking that responsibility okay now the objects of your system can be created can be wear by one external system okay i repeat again what exactly ioc says is you can have you can have one external entity separately meaning a completely uh, a complete external entity okay which can do this job for you which job for you the job of creating and wearing the objects meaning object creation and object wearing okay object creation and object wearing can be can be done by you know like some kind of external system some kind of external entity for you are you getting me yes 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 that means which problem the ioc addresses it addresses the object creation problem okay the object creation which is done by the application directly are you getting me or not it says don't create those object directly by consuming your application code you don't do that okay instead one external system one external system can do this one are you getting or not and how one external system is going to do and all this thing that is a separate part okay but you need to understand here if you look into it says uh, here the wearing is done by you know like using a concept called as what dependency injection okay dependency injection in the sense you know like pushing the uh, dependency so we'll be understanding what is exactly uh, the pushing of the dependency okay but keep in mind the uh, you know like the ioc uh, says you know like uh, you don't need to unnecessarily consume those code okay in order to create object of your system instead okay instead one external system can take the responsibility of creating the object of your system and if those objects are supposed to be if those objects are supposed to be you know like injected with each other if, if those objects are supposed to be 
wired with each other then this external entity can consider one approach called as what dependency pushing when it will be do the pushing like one object as i said like the pushing that b object into a you getting or not so the external entity can consider that mechanism in order to make sure like the wiring of the objects are also happening meaning this external entity is not just creating the object for you instead it is also wiring them are you getting my point i repeat again the external entity is not just creating the object for you but it is also taking the responsibility of uh, it is also taking the responsibility of wearing those object and how this wearing happen wearing happen here by using a technical concept called as what pushing the dependency now this mechanism of pushing the dependency uh, you know like dependency in the sense like as i said if a depends upon b then b is considered as a dependency of a right so that the dependency should be pushed in okay and that mechanism is called as dependency injection and ioc says whenever that external entity required to perform the wiring then what it will be doing is it will be pushing the dependencies is it clear can you explain me so uh, so ioc uh, is kind of i mean it it is the spring container which will take care of the object creation yes because uh, and, uh, oh, yeah just a moment here yeah. now if you observe here on that part you know like what is ioc now what i explain i i mean ioc says there should be one external entity right yeah and yeah. the external entity should perform the object creation and object wearing and object wearing it will be doing through a concept called as dependency injection right Uh, this is yeah. what uh, your ioc says but for this uh, if you observe for this concept okay the implementation is provided from spring framework what was that implementation the implementation from spring framework for this particular one is uh, you know like the implementation from spring framework for this concept is what you know like the spring container spring container is one of the implementation of what ioc concept correct no for the ios design part that means yeah. whatever we said here that is being you know like that is being you know like achieved by the spring container spring container really does all these things okay you just go ahead yeah i think you got that point yeah go ahead yeah uh patab um i have a question let's mm -hmm. uh, see here here we are uh, spring container is creating the objects mm -hmm. even in our code we can write uh, the program to create the objects mm -hmm. so what extra benefit we are getting i mean don't so, you realize like uh, this pen are taken away from you right you okay. don't need to create object right that 10 percentage of code whatever we discussed that is no more in part part of your part of your application yeah, let's Correct say i have a java yeah uh, let's say i have a java class mm -hmm. uh, where i am creating an object of student class let's say mm -hmm. and student mm -hmm. class i am passing the name and uh, roll number constructor construct yeah mm -hmm. so same thing i need to configure in my xml file mm -hmm. uh, spring.xml file mm -hmm. so uh, i mean we are just segregating the code i mean taking from java class to the configuration file mm -hmm. but anyway we have to write the code isn't it i mean this is where you know like you got a lot of flexibility of uh, uh, what do you say like uh, dynamic stuff uh, you know uh, you 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 need to understand like uh, say like if you are writing student s equal to new student it is becoming a kind of hard coding stuff you know yeah um but say like uh, you think of in an interface based model okay um i i want you know like some objects should be attached dynamically okay Now what you will be doing so like i have student as an interface but i have mba student mca student kind of thing okay Uh, my reference type is say like student is an interface i consider or as an abstract class or something like that okay, okay. and i have mba student mca student kind of thing and uh, my programming should be going like this meaning i will be having student s equal to okay but i don't know what object really i need but if i do a hard coded programming i will be either writing uh, i'll be writing either like uh, uh, i'll be either writing something like a new mba student But if I write new MBA student, that uh, 
that student is, is equal to you know it is tightly bounded to the mba student but at some time i need you know like an mc student to be attached or something like that are you understanding or not yes, yes now the dynamic stuff i need now can you can you achieve that one that dynamic factor whenever you are using the new keyword kind of thing no you never uh, uh we can achieve by reflection by new instance we can do I meaning reflection is a kind of absolute pen there actually reflection is really uh, you know like a biggest pen there you know like it's 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 take a lot of uh, uh, reflective stuff in order to do there the point is uh, you you get much more dynamic polymorphic factor here you know like uh, you can just make a small thing there you know like on your xml file and you can just get it done okay okay Any sense or not yeah yeah okay so meaning the first first intention was ensuring like this object creation job uh, you know like it just taken away possibly as you are getting into the programming this kind of uh, realization will be having like how this uh, putting the things on a xml than uh, putting putting you know like in the directly on your source code level how it can be beneficial yes that is true okay but but the benefit is the great benefit on this context is the dynamic polymorphism will be getting much more dynamic polymorphism back okay? okay but as far as cluster for name is concerned it's a reflective one and it's very much performance deteriorator factor is it clear yeah okay now you just explain me like what we discussed so far uh okay the from beginning yeah i'm meaning if you can okay so the spring core container is a implementation of ioc design pattern from spring frameworks okay yep ioc is a architectural design pattern generally the ioc uh, says we need to have one external entity in our system in order to create an object and wear that objects so external entity not only creating object it a wearing object and uh, pushing uh, uh you know the object is yes, that wearing that wearing wearing in the sense what chaining those objects making available for the yes. our requirement like that yes and that one happened through a, a concept of what you know like pushing the dependency yes pushing that is a dependency injection that's a dependency injection so mirajan is it clear um i have a doubt in wiring pratap so what basically is wiring wearing as i said like um, uh, you know like uh, you have uh, yeah we have something like uh, uh, what do you say like uh, class a as i said and uh, it depends upon class b okay is it clear or not yeah now uh, if you want to create a class first you got to create b class meaning okay. if you want to create one object of a class you have to create one object of b class because the object of b class is a dependency for a class object right yeah. now if you do manually what will be doing it will be first writing b b1 equal to new b okay where you are creating one object of b class and then we'll be saying a a1 equal to new b of supplying that a1 so that is what a manual dependency you know like you are you are organizing the dependency okay. right or not yeah yeah right but this this things if you if you you know like let this job of object creation is taken away from you and one automated system is doing this job for you that automated system need to ensure like uh, that b object is also injected into a or not meaning say like if i allow my spring core container to create a object for me right object a for me then i also ex meaning i also expect the spring core container i also expect the spring core container also creating that b object along with that that b object is it is pushing into my a object correct or meaning that organizing that b object uh, as a dependency into my uh, a object correct or not that is what i refer as wearing so like for one object there could be many dependency right now we don't expect like that external entity just going on blindly creating the object right it also need to organize the dependencies for that object and how it is going to organize those dependency it is going to organize those dependency by pushing those dependency into the object are you getting or not so whenever this this external entity meaning in particular like the spring container hands over you an object after creating 
then that object is a full fledged object and it is a ready ready to ready to use object meaning it is already organized with all its dependency you can just go on using it making sense yeah any other question uh, no problem okay now you see that there is a small snippet i have written here you can understand but before uh, getting into you know like uh, uh, as i said like yesterday it, it's it's a new i think possible if you understood the uh, definition of a spring core container and uh, what is ioc kind of thing little bit about the dependency pushing or dependency injection kind of term then you have to now not think about a separate programming uh, when you, you need to change the way you are thinking about uh, the basic programming okay spring kind of environment you got to do a small adjustment on your coding style okay that's required okay and uh, no doubt this coding approach you know like often we used to follow but many time uh, many people don't do that okay there is a certain scenario where many people don't follow that now if that coding convention you are not following then you cannot take much more benefit of uh, a spring framework because the point is say like you are having one object a and object b as we said now there should be one injection point you must create one injection point are you understanding or not meaning if uh, say like uh, uh, your your uh, like class a right you are having a class a class a meaning object a depends upon object b but what you are doing is you are really not creating any injection point okay instead you know like what you are doing is you are just uh, um, you know like just creating that b object where exactly you need it meaning what i'm saying is something like this look into i said class b okay Now observe this particular point what i'm trying to refer i'm saying class a this is a small programming changes you need to have now sometimes people do like this public void say like do something okay you are just doing something here assume like and now many people what they will do is they will be just saying okay b b1 equal to new b actually this is their requirement I mean, they will be doing something like this new b this okay now now here in this context you you can realize like uh, a object is expecting one b object correct or not a object is working with b object or not yes yes but if you look into this kind of coding is really not suitable in spring kind of environment okay now what is the problem see a object need one b object that is true okay but here in this program what you are doing is you are just creating that b object I mean, no doubt we created that b object this time if there is no external entity doing things right our object uh, possibly you know like if i if i do the things like this okay somewhere on my other piece of code i'll be saying a a1 equal to new a and i'll be saying something like what i'll be saying a1 dot do something something like that writing right i'll be writing something like this if i write something like this then possibly every bit of object creation i'm taking care okay but what i'm saying is if you look into your a class this this class is not designed in a suitable way for dependency injection are you getting my point now what is the what's the problem there actually you never defined an a kind of injection point meaning if you are expecting this uh, uh, meaning a spring container kind of thing should take the responsibility of uh, creating your a class object okay and uh, while creating a class object it should inject uh, one b object into it then this kind of coding is uh, not suitable there okay now why as i said like you did not supported any injection point okay meaning spring framework very badly depends upon some injection point you have to define one injection point okay so this is where you got to inject the thing are you getting my point yes yes now that injection point how you will be defining is you need b okay you need b now as you need b then you program it in a proper way what is that one is this is a small changes you have to adopt okay that is you just define b b1 okay and here you may define that one through some injection point either through constructor or through some kind of setter method 
okay you can say something like public a class constructor taking one b type of object as an input and here you'll be saying this b dot what is that this b1 equal to b1 and then this is now this is one injection point you define this kind of injection point okay bring if if your coding is something like this 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 constructor i consider as an injection point okay which you often do most of the time you do this kind of coding this is not a new way of coding okay this is nothing a innovation okay we do this kind of programming but what i'm saying is sometimes people don't do are you getting me on it but while you are expecting to work with a spring framework kind of thing and you are expecting spring container need to perform the object wearing for you okay and object creation and object wearing then 100% remember 100% uh, what should happen is there should be some kind of defined injection point if the injection point is not there then spring cannot inject the dependency are you understanding yes yeah. meaning this injection point could be possibly either like through a constructor you can have a constructor like this where you are saying okay so through this constructor you inject my dependency or you can have some kind of notion of a setter method okay you can say set b1 and uh, you can have a parameter so you can say like okay so whenever you are creating one a class object please ensure like you are injecting one b class object through this setter method called as set b1 something like that so if these kind of injection points are not there then working with a spring container uh, you know like to ensure like the object creation and uh, dependency wearing or the dependency injection you know like is not possible any question on this part no brother okay now that is what i did here actually is a small piece of code snippet if you observe you know like we are saying something like uh, a class you know like dpt service okay and this one is particularly uh, a kind of a service object you think of okay and meaning a service layer object and possibly this one is depends upon another uh, object called as dpt dao okay now you observe none of the places i created if you look into none of the places i created the dpt dao object look into this code are you understanding or not never never i created the dpt I meaning you can think of like dpt dao is a kind of interface are you understanding or not you can think of this one as an interface yeah. and and you know like as i'm programming to this interface okay i always have the flexibility of switching between the implementation dynamically okay that is what i was saying like earlier you were saying okay i can go for cluster for name but the cluster for name is a real mess actually okay now here what is happening i just define one reference variable i said dpt dao dao is just a reference variable i never created the object i, I repeat again this this dao is not an object just an object reference okay and here we program say like one constructor like this we are saying public dpt uh, service you know like we define an injection point we are saying okay this is where we are expecting the dao should be injected okay so if you consider that constructor which is commented if you consider then we are defining the injection point okay for this dpt service is as the constructor okay and possibly if you are not interested on through the constructor then as i said you can have a Uh, you know like a setter method for that purpose you can you can have this kind of thing you can say set dpt dao and you are just doing but you observe like none of the place if you're going through this constructor approach or if you're going through the setter approach none of the places you are creating the object directly but you know like uh, you know without having the object with me i can finish my programming if i have the reference variable with me correct or not yes yes correct Yes or no, both of you? Yeah. Yes, yes, correct. I can just going on. I can just going on hitting my code. Okay, as long as I have a you know like valid reference variable with me, and, I, and and my compiler never complain. But when exactly object is required? Object is required really at runtime. Are you getting my point? Object yeah. is really required at runtime. And as uh, as much I can defer my object creation factor, I can go that much dynamic. right mm. so as i said like at run time i can i can choose you know like a correct implementation or the required implementation of the dpt dao and injecting that one into the dpt service 
and whatever the implementation of the dpt dao i'm injecting you know like uh, relative to that the dpt service is going to work are you getting me you know so that is what i'm saying it gives you a wonderful dynamic polymorphism you know like kind of feature is it clear or not but as i said like a little coding adjustment you have to do okay when you need a dpt dao if you directly you if you directly try to create the dpt dao object at the at the method or something like that uh, where you really need it and you are not defining an injection point then spring cannot help you because you will not, never have an opportunity to explain spring framework about that you cannot say okay so this is my this is my uh, you know like inject I mean, this is my dependency and you inject uh, this dependency at this point you cannot say that are you getting my point so that's the reason whenever you are working you make sure that you are at least defining one injection point Okay. But we have I to create, uh, uh, Pradhap, we have to create a uh, object for the deep, deep, right outside uh, uh, this class. Yeah, that that is where our container will come into the picture. Okay, okay. so that is where we will be explaining our container. Here, how to we are, do. here, just we are passing that uh, deep, uh, department DEO uh, through the constructor. Yes, we are just many. We are not. We are just programming. Actually, we are really not supplying any object. Uh, no, okay. no, yes. okay. just, a, just a kind of programming model. Okay, we are really not supplying anything. This will happen. Okay, meaning this will happen. A valid DPT DAO object will be injected at the time of DPT service object creation, and okay. we will be letting the container to create our DPT service object. And when container is creating our DPT service object, at that time it will try to. You know, like inject the DPT DAO object via the constructor, so which I refer as a, a kind of injection point. Is it okay. clear? Okay. Okay. Now the question goes like, okay, so how how you are going to explain these things to the Spring container? Because Spring container, you need to talk to the Spring container, right? Okay. This is my this is my uh, object. Okay. This is my object, and this object depends upon Uh, that other object and all these kind of thing you got to explain or not okay and uh, that is where you take the help of some kind of xml stuff okay so you'll be using this xml kind of file okay so uh, you know like now now the point is uh, um after writing this kind of uh, class you know like as i said defining suitable injection points okay uh, you got to you got to define everything uh, to the You no, know, like you go to define everything to the Spring container, and how you can define this thing to the container? You know, like uh, uh, the Spring container in the current release supports varieties of approach. Okay, uh, you can you can explain these things to the container through uh, what you say, like is XML kind of approach, which is pretty verbose approach, but it is pretty much explanatory approach. Uh, there is something called as annotation kind of approach. Also, you can consider. Like which are new from you know like Spring 2.5, 3.x, and even 4.x. Okay, so you can also choose that you know. So it's not necessary to have uh, some you know like completely. Many times uh, student raise a question like, okay, so I go to write one separate XML file. It's not about writing XML file or anything like that, but it's all about uh, what pain it is taking away and what kind of benefit it is providing because having. Uh, a support for a dynamic polymorphism kind of thing is a is a great thing i i consider okay so whether you are writing uh, you know like one xml file to describe these things or uh, possibly xml might uh, sometimes consider to be a little verbose to few developer okay but you need to understand you know like it's just all about certain configuration detail and as your language evolve or things like that these uh, uh, verbose xml can be taken away that is what happening through your annotation You're getting an so the amount of xml what you write uh, that is being minimized through your annotation You're getting or not so don't yeah. consider that way like okay i got to write another xml okay but you need to understand like uh, uh, what is happening inside your code you know like what kind of pain the the uh, what do you say like the spring container is taking away okay it it's making your system more more clean and, and i can consider that one is a very wonderful statement right whenever Uh, you work with this dependency injection based model okay and you are trying to take the benefit of the spring container you will be 100% fine your system is not that much cluttered okay you'll be finding your system is much more neat and clean right 
because you never you never unnecessarily create those messy objects just throw one reference because if your system is well organized you'll be possibly finding your system is uh, uh, in a model of p2i right so programming to interface or programming through interface so if you're working with that model and then possibly you will be only having the references of the corresponding interface and your coding is going on but unnecessary object creation and all these things are just taken away from your code right? and that gives you know like very much clean very much neat and clean code okay and uh, as i said like the dynamic polymorphism is always achieved are you getting me or not okay so that was the point okay so here i'm explaining these things through xml kind of thing don't worry about this i'll explain that okay but uh, the same thing can be done uh, through some other approaches like what annotation kind of things also is it clear or not yes or no yes yes so now we are uh, supposed to discuss with this uh, dependency injection okay so i think we'll be discussing this dependency injection tomorrow okay but any question you would like to raise uh, right now we don't have any i don't have any questions uh, even i don't have any questions yeah. um, so far you understood whatever i discussed yeah 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 pratap can you share this document yesterday you told that uh, we have not received it yes i will do that i think you are uh, yeah on that mail id yeah it's there yeah okay so no question right so tomorrow what i'll be doing is i'll be starting with uh, this set uh, di part okay so what is dependency injection and we'll be understanding the different way of uh, uh dependency injection possible like pushing pulling and uh, directly creating the dependency and the types of dependencies uh, you know like types of dependency injection and kind of thing. and then we'll be writing some code possibly like possibly tomorrow or day after tomorrow we'll be writing one code okay and we'll be taking that code as a reference uh, to understand what we discussed so far like okay the ioc kind of thing is available and uh, dependency injections are happening okay so we'll be just looking into that and then we'll be entering into uh, you know like uh, because uh, let me tell you like in ioc um this is this is one part you got to understand first of all having a better realization of what is this container what is ioc what is dependency injection these three things you got to clearly understand okay. and once you're living these things you know like what you'll be finding in ioc is also it's all about learning this configuration stuff and how you talk to the container okay i have this object i have this situation and uh, that thing how you explain to the container I and mean, mostly you will be learning a lot of xml and annotation kind of stuff you getting on but uh, uh, you know like uh, after few days like uh, after 3 4 days or 5 days you'll be finding again few more concept meaning uh, as you're getting into the higher end of the ioc you'll be finding much much more uh, concepts and uh, much more api related stuff uh, of spring ioc uh, but but in between we'll be finding a lot of xml based configuration you are learning okay so we'll try to see like xml based as well as the annotation based okay okay okay, okay. Yeah, no? which id you will use eclipse or for the no, eclipse we'll be using sts sts okay yeah. that is only see, ID? id's are uh, that's no where you know like uh, the discussion there because you know like uh, possibly somewhere in might have well known Uh, like uh, you know like once you start working with you'll be just getting habituated with them we we are interested much more focused on the concept are you getting me or not okay yeah. and uh, id many time many people uh, portray that it is important actually i don't think id id is important id is just a kind of tool that help your faster development you okay, know uh, so yeah you can you can choose a clips you can choose netbeans you can choose intellij uh, and uh, you know like uh, anything you can think of okay but the thing is like spring is having its own id which is much more fine tuned for spring kind of application development okay so we'll be using that one so what is that ac ac id sts 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 okay means that stands for spring tool suit okay all all the examples whatever you want to show or live you can use the sts right yeah we'll be we'll be using meaning i'll i'll be doing every coding here actually yeah okay okay and uh, one one request from me and uh, pradap uh, whatever things you are explaining right so just to uh, in the notepad if you explain with graphically so then we can remember you know forever yeah, we will do that we'll do that yeah, meaning yeah. once i get into you don't worry about meaning we'll be doing that one in ms pen yeah yeah in But the classroom generally get into any situation like that actually yeah, yeah. 
yeah in the classroom generally you know the, on the uh, mm. board yeah. you know you can draw with sketch no, 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 that is that is true actually yes I meaning but what i'm saying is like um, once you're getting into such context actually will be uh, will be trying to present through the ms band yeah that will be much better because that sometimes what happens certain thing i could not convince you yeah, yeah. happen the graphically yeah, yeah the graphically yeah, yeah it, that is more uh, sensor uh, yes that uh, like more sense. Yes. yeah if you uh, at least you write in the notepad some of example yes. so if you save that uh, uh, not not notepad in a paint kind of things so if you ah, meaning that that will happen actually meaning that is what i'm saying every bit of information you know like as far as examples are concerned i'll write in front of you there's no question yeah right and uh, if you yes. save the to, yeah if you write in paint and uh, save it and send us so then we can uh, you know when we prepare we can see that uh, yes. sketch yes. kind of things yes and that is what i'm saying actually meaning whenever i get a proper context uh, like ideal i see that's 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 all depends you know like so like uh, i was talking about like ioc and uh, container spring container yeah. and you capture that relationship properly you you immediately understood okay i was just a part and i was a container my spring container is an implementation of that you yeah. could not understand possibly i'm trying to explaining again uh, coming from some other side you know like that i'll do yeah okay it yeah. all depends how faster the student is understand if okay. a student i think like okay they're not not understanding the point what i'm targeting then that is where possibly okay i thought okay now let us let us present the thing through some kind of diagrammatic way okay so that i'll do you you just ig- meaning just ignore that part and uh, leave those detail upon up me you know like so yeah that that i'll take care okay so and uh, and possibly you might be thinking okay so here there is a small piece of code snippet you saw like uh, that uh, dpd service or something you might have got an idea okay is it going to be like that? no i don't teach actually you would have observed like this document is just a reference for me that i'm not missing the order okay but whenever i explain you would have observed actually i explain from my side completely explanation is from my side but this document is just a standing reference for me which is going to guide me okay what i need to teach right after this are you getting yeah. the bullet point it just identify me but remaining explanation you would have observed so far i i speak from my heart actually what i understand yeah yes yeah. sir that is yeah so a document you know like is not for me anyway it is just a reference standing to identify you know like select the bullet point okay so now i need to talk about dependency injection uh, because you know like those uh, those detection if it is goes wrong you know like possibly a certain thing you are you are talking about but uh, uh, possibly before that certain thing should be finished okay so for that purpose i ensure like because it's a very big big you know like tool or technology kind of thing it's a huge one and so it's a lot of different thing okay so you need to ensure like there is certain reference uh, Uh, hinting you like okay what is the order properly okay so the document really helped me on that direction but don't consider this this example whatever you saw here uh, you know like that is for that purpose no so uh, it's not you know like on that direction so we'll be writing a brief bit of code we are understanding and explaining everything yeah okay yeah thank you professor yeah, so- I I I'll, I'll be sharing this particular one i think your mail id and all these things are there with me so today actually i'll be just doing this okay and okay. pratap this will be enough for interview right in at least in indian market meaning let me tell you actually i'll be teaching up to spring 5 meaning possibly not 5 saying 5 could be little wrong but up to spring 4.x every bit i'll be te- meaning teaching you okay in every module every bit i'll be teaching you so how you are cracking that's all up to you meaning how much effort you are putting and one thing let me tell you this is my bad practice i i don't detect question meaning i don't i'll never say this is a question okay na so what i'm yeah. saying is you try to look into some interview questions okay meaning the fundamental what is uh, what why how that kind of question you might be finding just make a simple google search okay yeah. spring ioc interview question you just type you'll be finding few question now you just have those question with you and whenever i'm talking about try to map okay whether we are addressing every question or not we're getting yeah 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 okay and as far as your experience is kind of factor that is that is different story correct or not yeah. but subject wise content i can i can guarantee you don't have any trouble okay you're getting me or not yeah so subject okay. i'll be ensuring like up to spring 4.3 everything is in your hand but uh, you know like your experience uh, many experience in the sense if you're saying like seven year then you have to prove that seven year right so you have to speak to them on that lang- body language correct or not 
So yeah. that is something we take care. But as per subject is concerned, like there is no uh, no compromise from my side. Okay. Yeah. Uh, will you uh, at the end of this course uh, will you provide any uh, mini project like that on the springs? And no, 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 that's not there. No, no. See, let me. Tell you, I don't give any fake assurance. Uh -huh. yeah, I'll be saying yes today, and after that, I'll be saying no. So that that kind of thing is not there. Okay. Uh -huh. It's pure training, meaning the spring framework training only, but uh, project kind of things are not involved here. Okay. Yeah, that's a great, uh, Pratap, uh, the clarification. So, no more question, I guess. Uh, no, Pratap. Okay, I'll Just see you tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Bye.